Hi, my name is Greg Harley, and today we're going to examine the variable initializer task. As the name suggests, the variable initializer task uh, provides a mechanism to create variables in a case or process and populate them with some default data. There are a number of different scenarios that we can use the variable initializer task in, a couple of which we're going to explore today. So let's get started, shall we? First, we need to log into the design environment and create our application. Next, we'll create a process. We could easily create a case, but a process will work just as well. Now, <clears throat> with this process, we obviously have a start event. The first task will be an initializer task, which will drop onto the canvas, and we'll follow that with a simple form, which will display the variables we initialize. We'll give the human task a name. Okay. All right. So now when we select the variable initializer, we note a property overwrite if existing. What this means is if a variable already exists, it will be overwritten by what's in the initializer. Sometimes this isn't what we require. For example, if we had a start form on a process, we, would, we may not want the initializer to override that. In that case, we would uncheck this variable, this property. The next thing is the actual property sheet to create the variables. We have four columns. <clears throat> Here we have a target. That target can be a namespace or it can represent uh, another reference variable. We have a name. The name is obviously the name of the variable. We have a number of different value types here, uh, string, boolean, uh, JSON object, and so forth. We have a value which can be explicitly set or set as a result of an expression. So let's create a few variables here. <coughs> let's create a name. We'll give it a value. We'll add another variable. We'll call it a username. And that'll simply be Bill. Uh, let's give him a street address. And that will be Smith Street. And finally, a city. And that'll be Smithville. All right, so what we've created here is, a, is four primitives. They're all strings in this case. <clears throat> and they'll be created as primitive variables and saved to the process instance. So now we'll go to the form and we'll create a form to display those. We'll drag in some text elements just to show the form. All right, first one is going to be the name. Next, we'll have the username, followed by the street, and finally, the city. So what we're doing is we're simply displaying the primitive variables that were created in the variable initializer. Save those and deploy it to work. Now let's log into the work environment. Okay, and let's create a new process. And as expected, we have a name, a username, street and city. If we look at global inspect, we will see these are primitives that are created with that information. Let's finish that, go back to design. What happens if we wanted to, rather than create a series of primitives, create a single JSON variable that included that information? 
So let's go back to the variable initializer again. Open up the properties, add a new variable. In this case, we're going to call it person. This person is now going to be a JSON object. Just for clarity, let's move this JSON object to the top. And now what we're going to do is we're going to reference this object by each of the other variables so that they become sub elements. So we go person, person, and so forth. Now, perhaps we want to have street and city under a sub element called address. So to achieve that, we simply use standard JSON dot notation to add the address to the front of the definition. So now we have a JSON variable called person that will have all of the same information. Let's say go to the display form, make the necessary changes here. Now we're going to have to reference person. So we'll go person.name person.username person.address.street since we created a sub element for address person.address.city. So now we're referencing the JSON variable that we've just created. Let's deploy that. Create a new instance of the process. And here, once again, we have the variables as declared. But what's different, and when we look at inspect, is we no longer have a series of primitives. Instead, we have a single JSON variable with a structure of name, username, address, address street, and address city. Let's finish that off. Great. All right, so that's all well and good. We can see that we can initialize some variables. But one of the really cool use cases for variable initializer is to be able to map the results of let's say a REST request, a HTTP request, that returns far more information that we really care about. And what we'd like to do is cut that down so that the only information we're passing around is what we care about rather than what's returned in the REST request. So let's take a look at how we do that. Let's make a little bit of room to put our HTTP request in. We'll type Filter that is our HTTP task, All right? So what we're going to do is get our URL. So get request, our request URL is this. This is just a simple demo request URL. We don't need a body. All right, we're going to save the variable into a variable called response. Okay, we're going to save it as JSON, and we're going to save it as a transient variable. What this means is it will not be persisted to the database or to Elasticsearch. As soon as we hit the display form, this variable will disappear. That's okay because the initialized variable task will allow us to take the information that we care about and populate the person variable. So that's all we need for HTTP task. Let's now go over to the initialized variables. Update our mappings. So now the variable definition itself will remain the same, but instead of hard coding our values, we'll now use expressions. So the expression is going to be response dot name. response dot username is 
response dot address dot street so what we've done here is we've actually mapped the JSON variable person into the information that we care about that's coming from the response. Let's save that and save all that. Just to demonstrate, the response that will come from this API includes a lot more information than we have saved. We have a name, we have a username, we have a street and a city, but there are a number of other fields that are available within that response that we really don't care about. So going back to design, we've saved this off. Let's redeploy. We'll create a new process. And there we have it. Notice that we have our name, our username, our street, and our city populated from the result of that JSON call. Also, if we look at inspect, we see that there is a person JSON object which only has the information we care about and has the same structure we declared earlier. Let's finish that off. That completes the demonstration of the variable initializer. There are some other use cases that are available in the documentation, the link to which is in the comments below. I hope this was informative to you and thanks for now.